next time on Casino Royale with Cheese. You know, I still haven't seen either one of the John Wicks. Me neither. The third one's on its way, and I still haven't seen the first two. Wow, we gotta watch so, those. Yeah, we, we might have to, like, binge that crap. Like, uh, when yeah. the girls do their concert, you're upcoming pretty quick, so... <laughs> oh, next weekend. Yeah. But, uh, before we do that, let's talk about Blade. Oh, segue. yeah, I forgot that's yeah. what we're here for. <laughs> right? How are vampires born? That's a good question right there, dude. I wouldn't even think that like biologically speaking that like two vampires could like procreate you know <laughs> but well wouldn't you have this little vampire in your room like sucking up all your blood yeah basically <laughs> like, and what the the crazier part about that is is since vampires don't age is if you like give birth to like an infant vampire He's just gonna be like this infant that like is hungry all the time for like 500 years until you finally get sick of his ass and fucking stake him through the heart, you know? <laughs> Jesus, that got dark. <laughs> right? I'd be like, Jesus, this dude's annoying, you know? And now the conclusion. Houston, we have a problem. I have a really bad feeling about this. A boy's best friend is his mother. Hasta la vista, baby. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Silent Green is people! You ain't I did it! Let's put a smile on that face. I gotta warn you, Clark. They don't play the same games here as they do at them regular casinos. Royale Are you not hungry, sir? Oh, contraire, ma chère. He could eat the whole colony. Welcome back to Casino Royale with Cheese. This is episode number 32 of the show where we discuss movies that were number one at the box office exactly 20 years ago. My name is Shane. Today I'm joined by the man who sucks more than Lestat ever dreamt of. This is Mike. Impossible. <laughs> that dude sucked a lot. He did suck a lot in more ways than one. So <laughs> Makes you wonder. It does. Uh, it was, I caught some some stuff going on between like but him. We're and not Louis. talking about the movie. Yet. No, oh, we're not. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Jumping to conclusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what conclusions, but I'm definitely jumping a shark or jumping ahead. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just use jumping the shark out of context, like you tend to do. I know. I saw that, and I know you do that as an homage because you love me so much. It is a reference, definitely. Uh, how's it going today, there, Padre? Uh, could be better. Could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you know when you're getting fucking old. How's that? When you tear a calf muscle playing fucking softball. <laughs> with high school girls. No, not really. <laughs> no. no. With other guys who are probably too old to be out on a softball field. That's a fair guess. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Mike's on the late up list. Yeah, I'm walking around with a crutch for the first time in my fucking life. Yeah. And he didn't even... You've done a lot more physical stuff in your life yeah. than running to first base. Yeah, I'm not bragging <laughs> here, but I have literally climbed the face of mountains in Afghanistan with like 100 pounds on my fucking back. Yeah. And running to first base whooped your ass this time. Smoked me. <laughs> the opposing team team said it looked like I got shot by a sniper by the way I went down. <laughs> have you ever seen on YouTube the, the little, like, uh, she must be like, Three or four years old, the little girl that's like the sniper fails or whatever. It's hilarious because they'll take like this girl. She's basically shooting at a target or whatever with a rifle or maybe it's a deer or whatever. And then uh, she'll go through and like it'll show somebody like roller skating or whatever and just fucking bust their ass. And so <laughs> it's pretty great though, the I've way they edit it. I've seen versions of that. Normally it's like uh, Chuck Norris. Oh, and I've seen one that was uh, like Ryu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Ryu and Ken or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah They're yeah. like fucking, oh, you. And then fucking people go <laughs> like down. Hadoukens yeah. and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's this little fucking ninja one where he like fucking slide swipes people's legs. He like just comes out of nowhere, <laughs> fucking kicks them, and they go down. Yeah. They're really clever. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, I myself am good. Um, nothing much going on. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to work today? No. I was off today. So you did the four tens I worked four tens, yeah. Nice. Next week will probably be five days. 
but four tens are way better. Man, so the days kind of suck. I've still like had way longer days doing other stuff, but um, you know, ten hours and then you get a day off. I'll take that deal. You, you get know, three days off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so legit. I thought about it this way: like throughout the course of the week, you know, if I if it's a seven day week. I'm basically off almost as many days as I'm working, you know, so right. that kicks ass. That's awesome. Can't can't gripe about that. But uh, nope, I'm good. Me and Mike are officially in uh, our cheesy studios here in Oklahoma. Yeah, <laughs> we're like getting stuff together, you know, as far as like recording apparatus and whatnot. So. Yeah, we got some fancy new microphones on yeah. over. Yeah, hopefully they sound as cool as they look, but we'll see. They do look super cool. Yeah, we look like pros, like bosses. Well, we don't know about that yet. But no, we'll see. I, if only we sounded like it. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's. It's got to be better than last week's. Last week was kind of a mess when it came to the the mixing. I think it sounded like I was like in a. You ever listened to like the Howard Stern, and when uh, what's his name? What the fuck is his name? Howard uh, Stern. No, not, not <laughs> Howard Stern. His I have name, no idea. Baba Booey. Oh, okay. and Baba Booey like is talking from like the producing booth. Mm-mm. He has to like press a button, and you can tell audibly he's like over a different like system. Oh, okay. That's what it kind of sounded like last week. I got you. Like you were calling into the show or something. Right, <laughs> but I did like the music. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a good choice. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think that the music for this week's pretty good too, nice. but uh, it definitely matches the tone of this as opposed to Blade. So, um, why don't you go ahead and talk to me a little bit about uh, what it is we're watching or what we've already watched at least? So, um, as I said in the last podcast, uh, we watched Blade, and I didn't think about the fact that that's actually was our second vampire movie we had watched. Because uh, we did Dust Till Dawn earlier. Yeah, yeah. But um, watching Blade gave me a real, like, thirst, pun intended, <laughs> for um, a, a really great vampire movie. And I was tossing around some ideas in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the ones that kept coming back to me was Lost Boys. It's one of my favorites. So good. Uh, but we have a couple of our buddies that have mentioned that if Cook's we ever, already said yeah, yeah if we do a podcast on Lost Boys they want in so right. I knew it was probably too quick to make that happen um, so I decided to pick one of my other favorite vampire movies which is the 1994 interview with the vampire right how much of your love for this movie has to do with the fact that Tom Cruise is in it <laughs> a big part a big chunk yeah yeah but <laughs> it's not I mean Brad Pitt is awesome um, he is awesome. Uh, 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 what the fuck is her name? All of a sudden, I just went oh, blank. Oh, Kirsten. Her. Yeah, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. She's fantastic in this. She is. Um, so I mean, and Antonio Banderas is in this. I actually really like Antonio in this movie, and we'll talk about him when we get to him a little bit more. But yeah. I think that this actually had him kind of because with Antonio Banderas when he's in a movie, you kind of know what you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. But with this one, he really I think stepped a little bit out of his box. Um, more so than what you would see in like Desperado, for example, you know. Sure. So well, and I mean, obviously, the same can be said for Tom Cruise. Oh, definitely, yeah. I don't think he's ever done. This is the only time he's done a movie like this, in my opinion. He's done other movies that weren't like action movies, mm-hmm. but this is really kind of out there for him, you know. Well, we so. I have some theories about that, and I would love to talk about that when we get there. Okay, show sure enough. Um, why don't you tell me about? What's your? Do you remember the first time you saw this movie? Or? I don't. Um, I don't remember it, but I'm sure I saw it soon after its release. I definitely didn't see it in the movie theater. Right. But I think I watched it. I think it was one of those VHS times where like it was a bunch of us hanging out, yeah. like guys and girls. Like I had a group like we I hung out with in high school. Mm. It was it was a co-ed group and. Um, I in think between was, orgies, you yeah, watch well, this. Yeah, this yeah. is a little bit before my, <laughs> my orgy time in my life. Oh, I, mean, I got I might you. have been a freshman in high school. Right. But, uh, We're still riding the coattails of that orgy phase, so. Right. Wait <laughs> and, uh, That's what we're going to do tonight, so, yeah. <laughs> get naked and lay in a pile. Hell, yeah. But uh, and I think we, we watched it in one of those environments, sitting around, and I just didn't look away. Just captivated by yeah. it. Yeah. Huh. huh. Fair enough. And then I've seen it a handful of times since. Um I, I think I purposely don't watch it like very often. Like I yeah. keep big breaks in it because when I watch it again, it's so fresh, you know, that I just enjoy it again. 
You know, that's the funny thing that you mentioned about it is because I also enjoy this movie and I own a copy of it on DVD and I was talking to the wife last night and I was like, it's probably been 10 years since I've watched this movie for whatever reason. Like, I just don't watch it very often, you know? Um, so it's interesting in that regard. The first time I watched it, <laughs> it was a uh, TV edit version. Oh, God. <laughs> so, like, the movie was about four minutes long. You know? TV edit? <laughs> yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. Um, that was one of those deals where this is not the movie to watch on TV, like network TV. You can forget that. I still watched it, though, and I had a good time with it. Um, one thing I thought was interesting, I had completely forgotten that Christian Slater was in this movie. Me, too. Yeah. <laughs> Me, too. I was sitting there, like, I was looking at the cast list earlier this week, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, Christian Slater. Yeah. It, like, actually, for me, like, in the opening credits when I was watching it, because, mm-hmm. you know I mean? I don't do shit for research on right. the movies. So the opening credits, and when it said Christian Slater, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, the interviewer. And yeah. I actually had forgot that Antonio Banderas was me and you both in it yeah so i saw tom cruise brad pitt i was like yep yep and then the next superstars through i was like what i always remember brad pitt tom cruise and kirsten dunst sure and because and we'll talk about it later but kirsten oh my god what an actress man (laughs) she was great yeah but um anyway so yeah i don't remember much outside of the first time i watched this i definitely thought it was different um and i didn't I mean, I enjoyed it, but then whenever I saw it later on, on an actual, like, the full unedited version of the movie, I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> there's some fucked up shit in this movie. Yeah. But um, this is a book, well, this is part of the Vampire Chronicle series. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that used to be included in the title back in the day. I don't, I don't know what the deal was, because nobody calls it Interview with a Vampire, the Vampire Chronicles. Yeah, but now the title, like, because it's on Netflix right now for all those who want to go watch it. Right. Um, and it says, Interview with the Vampire, the Vampire Chronicles, right underneath it. I don't right. ever remember seeing that part before. I wonder if maybe they had intended on doing, because the way that the movie ends, it definitely leads itself open for other entries well, um, following. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a movie out there called Lestat? There's a book, The Vampire Lestat. It's an Anne Rice book. It's the same book series as this one, obviously. That's what I thought. They never yeah. made it. Maybe there was talks of making it a movie. See, I wonder if something like the bottom fell out or whatever, or like they couldn't get Tom Cruise back and like should just fucking never panned out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, I was wondering if this next one, like if this was like the first installment and then they're going to do like, you know, the Vampire Lestat, The Vampire Chronicles, and then Queen of the Dam, The Vampire Chronicles, you know, all that shit like that, maybe? Or if they is just... Is she part of... Is the Queen of the Dam part of The Vampire Chronicles? <laughs> so, yes, it is. Um, the This is the first of two entries into the Anne Rice uh, book, like, I guess, movie version. I don't think that The Queen of the Damned is actually supposed to be, like, a sequel to this, but... Um, I will say, though, that... Um, it's part of the same book series, though? It is part of the same book series. Oh. And so... But I think that they're taking a completely different take on it. I love that movie, too. See, I'm, I don't think I've ever watched it. Whoa. So... But I love that movie for one reason. Aaliyah. One reason. Yeah. Aaliyah is incredible. Right. And I was sitting back thinking about it, and I was like... So, in Queen of the Damned, we have Lestat... And a rock band. Like, talk about completely missing the point of Interview with the Vampire. Yeah, as, as Korn is the singing voice. Was it Jonathan? <laughs> Whatever his name is. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember his last name. Now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, that's incredibly lame, dude. But, you know, whatever. Um, so, I don't know if they were planning on doing another one. I know that this is a long-running book series of Anne Rice's. And... Um, She's since then, like, given it up from my understanding is she's actually become a pretty devout religious individual. What? Yeah. And so she doesn't really dabble in this sort of thing that much anymore. Um, Too dark for her. I think so, yeah. And it's funny. I was talking to the wife, and um, she was like, this movie seems almost kind of like sacrilege a little bit. And I was like, I don't really think so. Um, They don't really even talk too much about religion in this movie i don't think um there is some homages to other i think um like stuff that you could definitely make analogies 
whenever you compare it to like modern day stuff, but I don't think that this movie really had to do with religion all that much. So I don't think we'll so. talk about. Yeah, that stuff I guess so. Movie. Yeah. Um, anyway, so let's go through a real quick cast list here. Cause obviously we've alluded to a bunch of this shit already. Well, I can do a we couple off it. the top. Go ahead. Uh, Tom Cruise as Lestat. Obviously you're going to get that one. Brad Pitt <laughs> as Louie. Yep. Uh, Christian Dunst as Claudia. Yep. Um, and Antonio Banderas is Armad. Yep. Chris Christopherson is Whistler again? No, no. not really. <laughs> I totally missed that part. Right. <laughs> that was the director's cut. Um, no, you're right. We got, uh, I love uh, Claudia in that. Apparently, Christian Slater, his um, character's name is Malloy, but I don't think they ever actually say his they name. They don't say his name, but it is mm-hmm. Malloy. Um, other ones worth mentioning, I mentioned uh, Tandy Newton last week being yes. in this. Yeah. She plays Yvette. Yes. But I don't think they say her name. She looks so much younger. Just full of life. <laughs> well, she looks pretty amazing in, in uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's a beautiful woman. What's the name of that? Westworld. Westworld, yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, she still looks incredible, but right. I was blown away by how much younger she looked in, mm-hmm. uh, in this. Just a little bit part, but um, there's apparently in the cast list a woman, Virginia McCollum, who plays Whore on Waterfront. That she shows up in the cast list. <laughs> I believe that she's the one at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, I that, think I called her a barmaid. Oh, okay. That uh, Louis hanging out with whenever he first catches Lestat's eye or whatever. No, I know who Whore on the Waterfront is. Oh, okay. We'll talk about her when we get there. Okay, fair enough. Um, so there's a, a little bit. This movie is directed by Neil Jordan. Um that didn't really stick out to me the only thing that i saw of his i hadn't seen any of his other movies the only other thing that kind of stood out a little bit to me that um that i was at least familiar with the name was the crying game he did he directed and wrote that movie it's a really good movie i haven't seen it um and of course he apparently wrote an adaptation of the uh the script for it but and rice was credited for it because of apparently like um the guild regulations or whatever hmm. so Anne rice was credited with both writing the book and the screenplay but i guess he had final draft of the script but um <laughs> why don't we do some numbers here real quick mike if you're down for it that I mean, is I'll give it a shot okay um so this movie if i can find the info about it apparently i didn't record that so you'll have to give me a moment here I don't. Shane just never writes anything down. No, I never do. And he doesn't save the internet page. Well, usually I take a screenshot of whatever I find. But this time, well, now your new phone. I got a new phone this week. Too big for one hand. And I thought I moved everything over, but uh, yeah, my phone is too big for for my tiny Marco Rubio hands. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, let's see here. Uh, this movie was made on an, an undisclosed budget as of yet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, Anytime, Shane. I'm hurrying. Okay. Made on a total of $60 million. Wow. I think that's pretty good, considering all the old sets. Well, the shit. names. Yeah. The actors There's they got. There's a lot of big names in this fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, the, the actors they got for for that money, that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty good, yeah. Um, let's see. You mentioned Antonio Banderas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, in this, we any guesses as to how it did um, money-wise or weeks total, anything? Was it ever? I don't even know if it was a number one movie. It was. It was. Okay. Yeah. Did it make three weeks at number one? Just one. Just, Just one. one week. Yeah. All the artsy movies. That's all it ever. I guess happened. that's true. Yeah. You got to blow up buildings and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, how well do you think it did U.S. stateside overall? I'm gonna be really disappointed if it didn't make a hundred million dollars. Is that your guess? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Well, you are not disappointed. <laughs> it did one hundred five million two hundred sixty-four million. Oh, that's one of my closest thousand, guesses I mean, yet. Yeah, so you're only about five million dollars off. Pretty close. Pretty good. Worldwide, it did a total of two hundred twenty-three million dollars. Not bad. So, and that's what I find weird because it's not like a huge profit, 
But if they were setting it up for sequels, it's definitely not a loss, you know. Right. So, I don't know, man. And it could have definitely gained momentum. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is that a lot of word of mouth, I think, especially considering like this movie has a pretty big following nowadays, you know. Well, they probably couldn't so. afforded those actors again because Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, and Antonio Banderas, right, all got um, much more famous. Yeah, preceding they this film, so like Zorro, we already covered this year. Right. That, that this movie was four years before that. Right. And Zorro was probably like Antonio Banderas' like coming out party. Right. So, you know, he was only more expensive, and all the mm. actors were more expensive. Getting up there. Um, although you don't have to necessarily do Antonio again, because I don't know if he ever shows back up in the books. That's true. Um, you don't have to do Kirsten again. Although I wouldn't think at her age Kirsten would have been that expensive to get again. Well, but she would have been too old. That is true for a vampire that doesn't age. Right. Yeah. Um, Tom Cruise, on the other hand, that it was like two years after this, the Mission Impossible came out. And his popularity was off the chart. Yeah, he's been untouchable since then. Oh, yeah. There's Mike's phone. Yeah. Where you go, Mike? <laughs> Very unprofessional. The show must not go on, apparently, according to Mike. Um, Brad Pitt, on the other hand, he was getting ready to do, like, Fight Club um, a little while after this. But I think he even did, like, uh, River Runs Through It and all right. that other shit. Yeah, and so he was on his way, definitely. So he was... You might be... There might be some truth to that. I know that back in the day, it was a deal, too, where this was before, like, the budget, like, the, the sequels got bigger and bigger. And so they might have been like, all right, well, we got to scale down the budget, you know. What can we do, you know? And so <laughs> it was one of those deals where like, I don't I don't think we can make one, you know, for mm. a smaller amount. But anyway, um, do you want to talk about the movie? I do. All right. Get the ball rolling. All right, so we open up in San Francisco. Yes, we do. Uh, as we pan across the Golden Gate Bridge, it does this really great like pan scene through the, into the city. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I noticed that they point out, without saying anything about it, is the diversity of San Francisco in this time. Uh, okay. I mean, you, you, I don't know if you noticed, but there was different. There was definitely different people from all different kinds of cultures, is what I noticed. Like, yeah, in San Francisco, has pretty much always been known as a melting oh, yeah, pot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, something I noticed because I mean you saw like punk rockers right. walking near you know Asian immigrants mm-hmm. who were crossing the road in front of you know Hispanic workers and like you just saw this melting mix right. of people which I thought was pretty cool. Pretty cool. But we, uh, I think the music kind of sets the tone really well here too for the kind of movie you're getting ready to watch. The score is really good in this. Yeah, it is. If you're gonna sit back and uh, you know try to have uh, a good jolly time at the theater with this then you're going to be disappointed because yeah. <laughs> it's not that at all no but, yeah um but we find out pretty quick as the camera pans to a window on a like the third floor of a building mm. in this cool like corner room right i uh, like the crow made me think of that oh right okay yeah. i can see that um but we see louis uh and he is getting ready to tell his story to some type of reporter or writer we don't know who he is or exactly who he works mm-hmm. for but he has been looking for louis uh his name louis played by brad pitt right. as we mentioned christian slater is malloy the reporter uh or writer whatever he is and uh louis is getting ready to tell his story right. to malloy we find out that louis was gonna eat him yeah. <laughs> and uh then and he found he out knew that louis or that malloy was looking for him right um, and then, as it turns out, he was like, he found out what he did for a living, and he was like, oh, this guy has a story to tell. And so he decided not to. One thing I think it's interesting, did you notice the makeup on their faces? Yes. Mike? I think that the makeup, watching it in HD, I noticed it. Um, before, I haven't really ever paid that much attention to it, though. Um, I just thought that they kind of, like, brightened their skin up or whatever. But I noticed the veins, like, in yeah. their head and shit like that. Yeah, they're, like, almost translucent. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's... I like it because I think that's what you would look like if you didn't spend any time in the sun. Oh, yeah, I agree. Like and zero. you're already dead, technically. You right. know? Yeah. You're zero minutes in the sun. Right. Yeah. That's going to happen. I can see that. Um, apparently, what they did with the actors was they actually would hang them upside down for in 30-minute increments. So that all the blood would rush to their heads, so their blood vessels would be like bulging, and then the makeup guys would go real quick and try to draw on as much as they could, and then whenever the the blood like equalized back out, they'd hang them upside down again. What? <laughs> like, yeah, apparently, and I guess uh, it was 
Uh, the makeup that was done in this movie was done by Stan Winston, who had done like um, uh, Terminator Two and oh wow, yeah, um, like Aliens and shit That's like wow. that. So yeah, he's like a big deal. Yeah, and so yeah, but uh, apparently too, according to IMDb, once again, I don't know because it's all you know people on the internet contributing information. But according to the trivia, it said that Tom Cruise demanded that they build an underground tunnel to the studio where they would film so that nobody could see their makeup <laughs> like the like passers-by and shit like that like people driving in a car or whatever well i don't know look i don't know the credence behind that if it's true or not obviously but i could totally see him say like i need to have some type of passageway that no one could see me in right but an underground tunnel see tom cruise is kind of a diva so I could, I don't know. If I was the director, I'd be like, just put a fucking bag over your head. You know? <laughs> Nobody's going to see shit, but I don't know. Um, anyway. But they don't waste any time uh, in telling us uh, that Louis is a vampire. Right. And uh, in order to prove this to Malloy, he moves really fucking fast. He does. He, uh, he basically like just jumps across the room, essentially. You can't even see him move. Basically... Um, and so that's whenever Malloy is like, you're not bullshitting, are you? You know, it's a real thing. And, um, uh, so he says he hasn't been a human for 200 years. Right. And, um, he goes into how he was quote unquote born into darkness back in 1791. That's how he refers to it anyways. Right. Yeah. He was a 24 year old plantation master Yep. in a town just outside of New Orleans. He even mentions how it was a different time then. So a 24-year-old is a man. Like, you right. don't got time to bullshit anymore. Probably going to live to be like 40. Right. So. <laughs> he, at one time, had a wife and daughter who had both died. And he basically, I mean, he goes on about to talk about how, you know, he wasted his money and he drank a lot and he messed around with prostitutes. But bottom line, he had a death wish. Yeah, he didn't want to live anymore. And it even goes into detail. It shows him playing cards with a guy. And he was, like, cheating, basically, so the guy would, like, shoot him or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, like, opening his shirt up, like, sure, wouldn't shoot me, you know. <laughs> okay. Which is where Lestat first lays his eyes yeah. on Yeah. And, of course, the guy's like, this is fucked up. I'm not shooting <laughs> you. know. Right. Um, and so um, he is joined by his lady of the night, and they go across this pier. And uh, all of a sudden, this guy comes out of nowhere trying to mug the shit out of him. And uh, that's whenever Lestat puts a stop to that. Tom Cruise, of course. And um, he b ends up biting uh, Louis on the neck and tells him that... It uh, flies into the air with him. Yeah. And, and fucking... <laughs> what's he ask him? I know he says, I'm going to give you a choice I never had. So. I, no, he tells him that later. Yeah. I think he said something like, you wanted to die, do you still want that? Or yeah, you live? And right. Yeah. And uh, Louis says he still wants to live. Right. So he drops his ass from mm -hmm. a great height into the water below. Mm-hmm. Oh, he says he's tasted death enough. Is, uh, is basically what I believe it's Louis says. Um, so Louis wakes up in his house, and Lestat is there. And he promises him another life, basically, um, Where he can taste again, and, yeah, you know, feel again, right? Because new sensation. I mean, understandably, Louis is completely numb. Um, there, it's not hard for myself to imagine, and I would go on a limb and say most men with families, right? You lose your family, you're going to feel like dying every day. Yeah, essentially, probably not me, but you know, that's <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Family, you're not listening anyway. What do you care? <laughs> <laughs> But um, so uh, he, that's whenever he tells him, I'm going to give you the choice I never had. Right. And he, uh, Louis decides that he's going to go check out his sunrise for the last time. Yeah, I guess you, I, I'm under the impression that Lestat gave him some instructions. Right. Like, do everything you want to do. Because tomorrow night. It's on. Yeah. yeah. So he goes and watches his uh, last sunrise and he says he can't remember any other sunrise before that. Yeah. He always took it for granted never bothered looking at the sun yeah um he uh winds up turning him at uh, isn't it a cemetery is that or something yeah he's at his wife and child's yeah, grave yeah that's what it was and Lestat asked him if he had a chance to say his final goodbyes and fucking attacks his ass yeah turns him you bet this is where I was watching it with my wife last night and she was like 
this is gross. <laughs> just this one little like five minute scene. There's a lot of blood going on. You yeah. know, I mean, it's a bloody sport, man. It's, yeah, it's and I mean, it's not like if you're watching, um, like uh, you know, some Scorsese movie or something. Like this is they're just kind of like wallowing in blood. You know, really. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So he. This tells, is where he gives him his choice. Right. Yeah. Do you want this or not? You can die, or you can hook Live up with, with me. me. Yeah. yeah. So he, uh, Louis, decides to take his invitation and joins him. And then we get to see the a couple of the rules of this movie. Yeah. Um, so it's in this. It's not just you're bit by a vampire and you turn. Nope. You have to drink the actual vampire's blood. Right. So he'll bite you, suck out like a shit ton of your blood, basically on the verge of death, mm-hmm. and then. They will open up a vein or an artery or whatever and then feed you and then your body actually dies. Um, and so in so doing is really painful, obviously. But then like afterward, you wake up and that's only for a brief moment. But then like you're a vampire, you got the little glowy eyes, you know, you're beautiful. Yeah. You got long hair, mm-hmm. sharp teeth. Right. Um, I kind of like the rule in this one. Yeah, I kind of do, too. It um it makes sense to me that you know like I said in Blade you know you had people that could accidentally be like Blade's mom for example she was like accidentally you know turned into a vampire essentially you know <laughs> like, yeah and so I like this because in the Blade world everyone you fed off of unless you killed them they would turn right yeah um in this one you have to actively do something to turn them right which I like mm-hmm I agree I like it better um. He tells him, now look with your vampire eyes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and they never really say what that... I mean, he gives a couple little ways of describing it, but he's like, there's nothing I could say that could tell you what it's like, you know, to the interviewer. But the director of the film does show us, like, uh, the statue at his wife's gravesite. Mm-hmm. Actually, like, opens its eyes and right. looks at him. Looks at him, yeah. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when we get... We're back in the room where the interview is going on yep. and uh, we go over some of the ground rules for vampires which I was really glad they established them for us so crucifixes no big deal I like that that whole bit where he's like so crucifixes he's like does that bother you he's like I like looking at crucifixes yeah they're nice yeah <laughs> um, stakes in the heart not real bullshit yeah uh, the garlic all that stuff's not real no. but coffins are coffins are a thing one thing so they said all the things that don't work but they never actually say what is like super effect. The only thing that they mention is sunlight will kill a vampire, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they never really elaborate too much on other stuff that might. And so later on in the movie, I'm like, now would that kill him, or is he like still good, or you know? I was kind of confused about like whether stuff that was done later would be lethal, you know. I, but, I totally know what you're talking about, and yeah. I felt the same way. But um, so anyway. One thing that is a necessity, though, is drinking blood. They got that thirst. That is something in all vampire genre that is universal. If that wasn't in a vampire movie, then it's a shitty vampire movie. (laughs) Then you're just a dude who can't go in the sun. Yeah, and he lives forever. You're just like me. All right. It's like like that movie Powder, you know? (laughs) Or Mike's story, if they made a a biography. Just as fuck. Yeah. Um, So, um, they... Go to a bar, Lestat and Louis do this sometime later, and there's this woman that they're kind of drinking and joking around with and stuff, and Lestat starts to get a little frisky, and it's really weird whenever they start sucking the blood out of somebody, because it's, this is, I think, what you were talking about last week, how, like, they romanticize vampirism, you know? Um, cause it's almost like whenever he's like biting this woman's neck and like sucking her blood, like she's getting off on it, dude. Yes, it's almost orgasmic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like she's loving this stuff. And like, there's later on in the movie, you'll see where there's like a woman that they've been feeding off of and she's like loving it, having a great time and looks down and she's like, Oh my God. you know? <laughs> so I think that's the whore at the riverside. The, Oh, okay. I got you. The, the old guy. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, and it, so watching this back, like, act, like, like you just mentioned, I talked about rose, romanticizing vampirism last week, and I didn't understand my connection with it. But I think you're right. I think it was this film, yeah. um, and the victims' reactions mm-hmm. to the feedings. Yeah. That 
I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Basically killing them, and they're loving it. Right. Every second of it. It'd be it, hard you know? to feel bad about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, notice in this film, no, no sex. No. No. You never see anybody getting it on. You do see some some full frontal. but I guess that was in True Blood, where the, the sex was connected to vampires. Yeah. Do we want to talk about True Blood real quick? Quick caveat. Did, how much of that show did you watch? Every second. <laughs> I watched like through season three whenever that one Russell dude was like trying to wage war on the humans or whatever. And then I was like, that shit's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I won't go into too much of it, but I can see probably why you felt that way. But I like the show. Um, anyway. Yeah. That was uh, off topic. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they feed on a barmaid, and then... Um, this whole scene, by the way, kind of had me fucked up a little bit because <clears throat> everybody's laughing and partying, and there's these people that are doing this performance or whatever in the bar, and they're dancing and joking and having fun. And in the meantime, you have these two dudes that are off in the corner, like, feeding off of this woman, and nobody notices, nobody pays attention. It's almost like these dudes, like, you know, somebody's performing an alien autopsy, in the corner and like nobody's paying attention at all you well, know? this is 1791 yeah i'm guessing it's pretty lawless oh of course yeah and um i mean i can say that even in the 2000s and some of the establishments i've been on uh this could have happened in the corner and no one would have noticed yeah i could see that too yeah just walk away there's a dead person no one even notices for a couple hours Looks you like know? she just passed out yeah 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 um but then we go back to the plantation oh well there's an important thing here and i know yes. this is, go, ahead, go ahead oh i was just gonna say so lestat's feeding on her and he's like louis come get you some of this you know and so he feeds on her a little bit he's like go ahead and kill her you know it's not a big deal and well, then uh, no louis just while he's drinking he just sits up and says i will not take her life oh that's what it is yeah and uh, he's like, that's okay, I already did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lestat does. Lestat don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> no, he's a gangster motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, so, basically, it turns into Lestat is constantly goading in him into trying to kill, um, you know, his victims, and he won't do it. And so, Louis decides that instead he's just going to live on animals. He'll find rats and just fucking bite them in the neck. Well, suck he didn't them know dry. he could. They went back to the plantation and they yeah. had this huge meal sitting in front of them that Louis' servants had prepared for them. Right. Uh, they obviously aren't touching it. They don't have any, like, real world They hunger. don't give a fuck about, you know, French toast or whatever. It doesn't even seem like they have an appetite for anything else. No. They're not getting human food. So, um, there happens to be a rat in the living room or the dining room of the plantation house. And, uh, its neck and then pours its blood into a glass right and lets uh louis drink it mm -hmm. and louis like what you can feed off animals yeah it's like yeah it comes in handy if you're on a ship or you know whatever where you can't eat right and then yeah you can live off of it but it's he says it's not really living it's just surviving you know mm -hmm. um and so uh i know that with me if i had the ability to like move super fast like that and i just wanted to eat animal i'd go find a bear or something and like suck that son of a bitch dry you know <laughs> i don't know if i would want a tango with a bear if you can move fast that bear ain't gonna do shit to you mm, but i'm thinking more of like deer yeah i could see a deer like definitely. an elk well catching animals wouldn't be a problem at this point no. you know so but i digress um he actually is trying to coerce him into going to New Orleans, but um, Louis doesn't want to go. He has his own plantation and shit set up, so he's good. Um, but he does go. Well, they go to New Orleans. This was what I was kind of confused about. So they go to that like uppity party with the socialites, you know, and all that other shit. Were they in New Orleans at that point? Because later on, I was on, under the impression that they were. Because they cut like right to it, but. That I, at first I thought that, and I actually crossed it out of my notes, because then they're like right back at the plantation house again, and he's like trying to talk him into going back to New Orleans. I don't think it'd be very hard for them to get back and forth. I mean, they're in Louisiana. Of, yeah, they're right outside of New Orleans. And they can run super fast. Yeah, I don't think it's an issue. <laughs> yeah, we could be in Washington in four minutes. I you think know? Lestat wants to stay in New Orleans. Oh, I got you. And uh, Louis pushing back against that. Yeah, that's more of Lestat's scene, because we find out that he prefers eating like you know the rich socialites well at this party we get a rundown from louis yeah throughout the movie we get a lot of uh uh dialogue over the top of what's happening on the scene and it's louis telling the story to malloy right 
Um, so, uh, in this order, Lestat likes to drink from Young Beauties. Yes. Gilded Utes. Whatever that is. Yeah. I think they're like lady boys. <laughs> oh, okay. Could be. I think this we see him with uh, kind of a, a yeah. feminine sort of dude. You're right, and that's bit. what like kind of put the exclamation point on what I was thinking was. Yeah. And then he loves his favorite is the the rich fat aristocrat. Yeah. Um, Which that's not exactly low profile. <laughs> Somebody's gonna notice a rich fat aristocrat is missing. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. I'm thinking like if I'm a vampire in New Orleans in, in, in 1791, like. I'm killing all the prostitutes. Yeah, I'll go find hobos and, you know, maybe I might do, like, a Dexter thing where, like, there's a guy robbing a bank and I'll just go eat that dude, you know? Oh, you'll just suck the blood out of bad guys? (laughs) Yeah, there you go, yeah. You're a fucking vigilante vampire? (laughs) Right. Like Blade? I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm scratching, you know, my itch and two birds, one stone sort of thing. All right, I like that. A vampire with a conscience. There you go. And that's what Louis is, so. Mm -hmm. Um... So, <laughs> they're at this party, supposedly in New Orleans, and that's whenever Lestat tells him that, he tells Louis that there's this old lady that's there, and he's read her mind, that's a power that he has, and apparently she has killed her husband, and she has not taken responsibility for it, and um, so he says, hey, you should go eat that bitch instead, you know. Yep. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. Uh, so they go on a walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, Louis is with uh, the old woman and her two poodles. Right. And Lestat is with the Gilded Ute, I'm assuming. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, we see where... Of course, the old lady's loving it. She's getting attention from Louis. Yeah, she's like, I'm old enough to be your mother. Yeah. You know, and he's like putting the moves on her. Mm-hmm. And got him a cougar. <laughs> she's like an old retired cougar. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. She's cougar. She's up there. But, yeah, she's she's up there. Uh, um, Lestat gets the boy and mm-hmm. finishes him pretty quickly. Right. And while Louis like kissing on the neck of this woman, like building up the nerve to suck her blood. Right. <laughs> these fucking poodles are yapping. Right. So he just grabs him and eats him. <laughs> yeah. Old lady screams. Lestat shows up. He's like, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> you know? And then Lestat just breaks her neck. Right. Um. And so they get into a bit of a tussle because Louis like sick of hearing all this. You got to kill people, shit, you know. And uh, he winds up throwing him up against a tree, and uh, he's like, you know, you're not gonna hurt me. You're not gonna kill me, you know. You can't kill me. Yeah. He's and laughing at him. Yeah. <laughs> he goes. Besides, would you want to live without me? You know that sort of thing. Um, and so um, anyway, we see where we go back to the plantation and. Well, you, throughout the night, we see, like, dead doves. Yeah. Dead chickens. Right. And just piles of dead birds. Yeah. A whole lot of dead slaves. Mm-hmm. And some voodoo ritual. Right. Um, so, basically, you can conclude Louis killing all these birds. Right. And the stats killing the slaves. He's getting down, yeah. And, of course, all the slaves, they think that there's some kind of curse going on, you know, whatever. And are these Louis slaves? I think they are, yeah. I think so, too. Well, because she, they show up later at his house, right? And um, his Yvette, the the maid, she actually talks about, or the the house slave, I guess. She actually talks about how you know the the slaves are thinking that something's going on and there's going to be an uprising, you know. And I'll, I can only assume that they were his. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're back at the plantation. <laughs> yeah. So um, why did I write down? I said. Lestat's from Paris? Yeah, well, he came from Paris. Yeah. Uh, so or is he just talking about... Like, he, he started talking about Paris for a little bit, and then Louis' attention is like, what? You were in Paris? Yeah. I guess it's something Louis always been a little bit of, you know, Curious enthralled by. Yeah. The Creole thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, because Louis does identify as being uh, Creole. Right. So, you know, he's interested in Paris. Um, but before they could get too deep into a Paris story, Lestat throws a fit because he can hear these damn incessant drums oh, all yeah. the time in the background <laughs> and Louis like they know about us dude right they see us eat from empty plates and drink from empty glasses right like they know we're here mm-hmm and, and that's uh, where the Lestat hauls ass and that's when Yvette comes in and talks about what you were just saying right once again he actually talks tries to talk him into going to New Orleans right before he bolts and Louis like I'm not going to New Orleans and that's whenever Lestat dips dips on out mm-hmm. um but yeah so we see where the maid comes in 
talks about the slaves and how like shit's getting crazy out there and uh he winds up like biting her wrist yeah yeah and um so he comes out we don't actually see him kill her but he comes out with her in his arms and uh he's like hey you know well all the slaves rush the house right they got torches, torches in hand yeah and uh, he tells him hey you guys need to leave because this shit's cursed uh you need to go but he's screaming at him right you're all free men now this house is cursed right and he grabs one of the torches from one of the slaves and literally torches his house mm-hmm burns it down and that's um lestat shows up and fucking saves his ass before the house can burn down on top of him but he's pissed off yeah because he considered that like his place too right so that's what i was wondering so i guess fire kills vampires nope see that's what i was confused about so why did he have to save him at all pretty much you know <laughs> just because he cares about him i guess but there's yeah there's a lot of shit later on having to do with fire that i i was confused as shit about but whatever we'll get to it um so lestat he grabs louis and they wind up staying in like this mausoleum in this cemetery and um so that's whenever he says says that they wind up going to new orleans after all because obviously he didn't have a plantation anymore and we get to the the deal where there's the two women that uh, Lestat's like making out with, and uh, why don't you tell us about that scene there, Mike? Well, L- Louis tells Malloy well in the dialogue in the back that you know they just they did go to New Orleans and they rented a house on the riverfront. That's how come I think her name is the whore on the riverfront in the credits. Oh, I got you. Because uh, Lestat's getting down with these two girls. Louis just kind of watching from the window. He already knows what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Lestat takes one of them out pretty quick and then gets mm. into this flirting thing with the other girl sitting there. The, the girl's drunk. Right. Um, so, he, you know, he's romancing her. Yeah. Putting the moves on her. She's falling for it. Hook, line, sinker. And he goes down and just bites her titty. He's like nibbling on her breast. Yeah, well, he bites it. He's yeah, drink, he's drinking from her breast. And she is loving it, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like definitely getting off. Yeah. And then he calls Louis over, and they get into an argument, and that's when she realizes she's been bit. Yeah, she looks down and sees her bloody boob, and she's like, "What the fuck?" You know. <laughs> Understandably so. Yeah. Oh, obviously. Um, that's why. I don't know, man. Like you've heard of. Um, obviously, you know about camel spiders. Yeah. But from my understanding is like camel spiders, they can eat you, but they have some sort of venom in their um, mandibles, I guess, that it basically like numbs the area that they're munching down on. And so, yeah, that's what I understand. I've heard stories about like people that were in Afghanistan or whatever, like falling asleep and then like waking up and looking down and this fucking thing is like getting down on like their leg, you know? Oh, wow. I never heard about that. Yeah. And so... um, I wonder if that's kind of a, a similar deal is that, you know, maybe that's how the vampire thing works. Because these people don't know that they're being killed and eaten and yeah. shit, you know. I feel like uh, they possess some type of, like, ESP, too. I could see that. Where they can, like, kind of seduce you. Like, implant thoughts. Yeah. Maybe a little, yeah. I mean, because if they can read your mind, maybe they can manipulate it a little bit, too. It could be. I don't know. They don't tell us. No. I mean, your theory is valid, too. I don't know. I mean, whatever. Um, yours is definitely plays into that romanticized thing a little bit better though. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I think you're right, man. I think it was this film that I saw yeah. when I was pretty young that was like, yep, right, that's cool. But anyway, with this woman's bloody boob, um, Louis doesn't want to drink her blood at all, um, and Lestat's getting pissed off. Um, he eventually, he basically talks her into, like, go ahead and kill this woman, you know. And at one point, he, like, uh, goes through and, like, uncovers the coffin, you know, in their living room, basically. And she's like, oh, my God, is that a coffin? And he's like, yep, and you're going in. And he, like, chucks her in this thing, like, torturing this woman. She has no idea what's going on, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, Lestat's like, you're a fucking prick, you know. <laughs> like, you're going to kill this woman, but you're going to, like, terrorize her first, you know. Like, <laughs> it's awful. And um, so, anyway... Um, basically Lestat ends up killing her and Louis is just disgusted at him at this point you know um, so we see where there's this guy coming out it made me think of uh, like Monty Python <laughs> where he's like bring out your dead you know and all this oh, other yeah. shit yeah but they say that the plague has hit New Orleans right was the plague still a thing 
in like the late 1700s, early 1800s? You know, I don't know. But I'm guessing if Anne Rice put it in the book, it probably she was. probably looked into it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> before you put it down on paper. Yeah. My thing is, is like, you know, the plague I thought was, you know, basically done away with by the time like the Renaissance was, you know, a thing. So well, I think they've had different plagues. That's what I was wondering too. Maybe they're not talking about like the, bub- the bubonic plague, mm-hmm. but they're just talking about some major illness. I mean, it could be fucking smallpox for all we know, you know. Yeah. So. But um, so the plague's killing people. Um, Louis, whenever he leaves Lestat, he actually comes across this little girl whose mom has died from the illness, and um, her name is Claudia. And he winds up uh, like. I guess his hunger like overcomes him and he winds up biting this little girl and sucking out a bunch of her blood and uh, then uh, Lestat walks in and he's like oh there you go now you're playing the game you know way to go he starts to celebrate yeah he even picks up the dead woman and like dancing dancing with with her her. and says like oh she has a little bit of life left in her (laughs) right yeah Um, and then uh, so Louis like you know ashamed of himself and takes off you know but so we hear more mon- uh, monologue uh, over the top where he's talking about, like, at that moment that he felt her blood surging through his veins, he knew the stat was right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He felt terrible about it, but he knew the stat was but right. But it's really what he was craving, yeah. Yeah. So then uh, he goes into a sewer and mm, drinks 300 rats or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And that's whenever the stat tells him, like, I know how to find you. Just follow the trail of dead rats, you know. And it's pretty literal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's dead rats all over this fucking thing, yeah. Uh, and this is a part, a scene where I think your wife might have been, said it was a little bit like. It talks about God kills indiscriminately. And, like we do. Yeah. And there's no other creature created so much as we, because we are gods. Oh, okay. I can maybe see that a little bit. It's so weird, though, that if that's what Anne Rice was trying to get across, that she, like, later in life would become, like, religious, you know? <laughs> Do you, have you ever seen a picture of her back when she was, like, writing these books? Uh-uh. She looked like a vampire. Oh, really? She didn't have pointy teeth or anything like that, but right. super pale skin, long, straight, dark hair, huh. wore, like, black clothing. That's interesting. She's pretty gothic. Because I know that this book, it came out in like 1974, so it's old. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, it was like 20 years old when the movie came out. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, it's pretty strange. I looked her up at, yeah. like after the movie came out because I wanted to, like, <laughs> this is how, like. Mike's wanting to bang in no, rice. No, no, no. <laughs> this, this is how, like, dumb I was when I was a kid, man. So I see this movie. It's fantastic. I find out it was a book by Anne Rice. Anne Rice is my new favorite author. Oh, okay. I didn't read the book. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> because she wrote this movie I like so much. Yeah. She's my favorite author. Right. That's really weird. <laughs> I was young and dumb, dude. Right? Apparently, she was really pleased with how this turned out, though. Like, Why wouldn't she be? Oh, yeah. She said that it's, like, awesome like, compared to her book. So, But um, he tells Louis he's got a surprise. Yeah. He does have a surprise for him. They go back to the house with a little girl. Or they go back to their place of residence. Right. And uh, the little girl's, like, laying in bed. He's like, oh, I didn't kill her. He's like, nope, but I'm going to turn her. So, turns her into a vampire. Into a porcelain doll is what he turns mm-hmm. her into. Her hair grows long and her skin Curly. is looking great. Yeah. She looks like, what's her name? Curly Sue. Uh, I mean, I don't know. She look, it, for me, the best example is like a Victorian style porcelain doll. Yeah. She's got these long blonde c- uh, ringlets, mm-hmm. flawless skin, um, perfect teeth. Right. And then, uh, of course, that's whenever Claudia wakes up and she's like, what happened to me? You know? And um, basically, he like coerces her into consuming the maid of the house, you know? Well, she's hungry quick. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to drink from the vampire in order to turn. Right. And she won't let go of fucking Lestat's arm. Right. And then as soon as he like rips his arm away, she's like, I want more. Right. <laughs> so he rings a bell, has a maid come in, and uh, she sucks her basically dry. And, and um, that's where he gives us the rules that you can't drink. Uh, till the heart stops. Right. You have, to wait, you have to stop just before then, otherwise the death comes with it. Right. Yeah. So I guess that's the way to kill a vampire too. I think that's an interesting advent in this uh, series, in this movie at least, mm-hmm. is the whole idea of once the heart stops and like the body's officially dead, the blood is dead. Don't drink from it. You know. Yeah. yeah. I find that intriguing. Um, and then 
I think that this is, I watched it last night and I kind of got something else out of it because obviously at this point, Louis is like done. He wants out. He doesn't want anything else to do with Lestat. And um, <clears throat> he basically says, you know, she's like, where's my mom? And he's like, oh, your mom went to heaven, you know. And uh, she's like, oh, like I'm going to. He's like, no, we, you don't, we're never going to have to go to heaven, you know. And um, he's like, we're one big happy family, you know. And I think that that's interesting because Lestat obviously knew that Louis was like done and so he like turned this little girl and i almost compare that to like couples that are like on a rough patch or whatever on a break of a divorce yeah and they decide to have a kid because that's gonna fix their fucking marriage you know yeah. <laughs> like and so i watched that and i was like oh okay well i can kind of see where where she's going with this you know yeah because it didn't fix shit for him you know nope. really but um anyway uh, he talks about how Claudia is like a fierce killer. He does. Yeah, she kills everything. <laughs> yeah, they go. The the they show us kind of a montage of like almost every interaction she has with someone where she has the opportunity to kill him. She does. Yeah, she goes for it. The piano seamstre- teacher. Yeah, piano yeah. teacher, seamstress, the doll salesperson, mm-hmm. everybody. <laughs> I like the doll salesman because he's like. You know, these dolls are really expensive, and she just, like, looks at them or whatever, and then it shows her, like, walking away with a doll in hand, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and uh, we find out that she sleeps in Louis' coffin. Mm-hmm. And even when she wanted her own coffin, she would still, like, in the middle of the night, like, wake up and, like, go to his coffin to sleep with them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a kid and hops in bed with you. For them, though, it's the middle of the day. R- well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They show her, like, tiptoeing through the house to avoid the sunlight. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she literally like kills everybody, and he goes on to uh, Louis goes on to tell us that Lestat and Claudia would kill whole families. Yeah, um, this shows her playing the piano for a family, and of course he's in the background watching. You know, and he's like, "Play something a little slower," you know. <laughs> and he just go to town, play some killing music. Mm-hmm. So I just wrote down Claudia and Lestat go on a killing spree, um, where they're just eating fucking anything they can. You know. Um, then we get to where Claudia. Uh, reveals that she's really tired of being a child. They wind up going to... Well, uh, this is 30 years later now. Yeah. The time they, He said the time has flown and it's been and it's been 30 years since she was turned. Mm-hmm. So that's where we get into what you're talking about. Right. So she's a 30-year-old in like a 12-year-old's body. Well, she's like a 37-year-old in like a 7-year-old's body. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and she sees they hop on a boat and go somewhere... Um, I didn't catch where. There's a lot of globe trotting in this movie. They're not globe trotting. Just the, that's they're talking about how the times have changed. Yeah. How um, steamers turned into paddle boats and like all these different stuff. Seems backwards to me. <laughs> I can't remember what order it was. Yeah. But they were just talking about the changes that had happened over the right. thirty years, and that New Orleans was no longer New Orleans. Right. It had been. Ch- it's something new. It was different. Yeah. And uh, they're walking through the streets, and she sees a full-grown naked woman. Right. She's like, I want to be like her. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, well, you're not going to be like her. You'll never be like her. Right. And um, so she basically, like Lestat at one point, brings her a doll for like her dark birthday, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, I, you know, I have like a million of these fucking things. And uh, he's like, I, I thought you might want one more. And she gets sick of being treated like a doll and everything. She winds up cutting her hair. Goes she throws a fucking fit. Yeah. Teetotal fit. Yeah. Which, understandably, I mean, after 30 years, I'd be sick of that shit, too, you know? Well, she wants to be grown up. Yeah. What little kid doesn't want to be grown? Of course. Yeah. I mean, our, my little girl, she's five now, and she's been talking about, like, wanting to be grown for, since she was at least three. Right. Like, when I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up. Mm-hmm. So now you're going to tell this, let's say, Claudia, let's say she's 12. Right. Now she's got a 42-year-old mentality. Right. And she still looks like a fucking 12-year-old. Right. Yeah. She'll never have the... The they, they even, I think uh, Lestat even says the endowments. Right. Yeah. Later on, he does. Yeah. yeah of a woman, so mm-hmm. it's pretty pretty hard for a young woman, I would imagine. Yeah. She chops off all her hair, goes back in the other room, looks in the mirror. It's all grown back. Yep. Sucks. Instantly, mm-hmm. like the Santa Claus. Right. <laughs> 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 the only thing these two movies have in common. <laughs> Found the connection. Right. Um. Yeah, we do like seven degrees of Tim Allen or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Claudia starts demanding answers from Lestat. Um, she says, who is it to turn me, you know? And um, she's like, it was you this whole time. And basically just gets pissed off, talks about how much she hates him, and then leaves. 
And then, well, after uh, she slices him in the face with some yeah, scissors. Yeah, she does. She cuts his face. It heals right up, you know. Before the blood is even dropped, basically, this, the cut is already healing mm-hmm. over. Uh, for those little moments like that where they did use CGI in this movie, I think it's used to really good effect, honestly. Uh-huh. Um, like, it doesn't... This movie didn't have the same requirements CGI-wise as, like, Blade, for example, but it looks pretty good whenever they have to whip it out, you know, so... Because I, I think you're right. I think they use it sparingly. Right. Uh, yeah. So they have a chance to really focus on to make it look good. Mm-hmm. And so uh, she winds up leaving. She, uh, Louis winds up taking her to her home where uh, she was originally turned, or where she originally got bit. <clears throat> and he starts telling her, like, look. Tells her the whole truth. Yeah. It wasn't just Lestat. I'm the one that basically sucked you dry. And, um,. You know, he's the one that wound up turning you. She's like, oh, okay, so it's both of you. Well, I fucking hate you too now. And so she dips out. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, <clears throat> she goes up to Louis later whenever they're both at their place of dwelling. Um, and she tells Louis that I can't hate you, you know. Um, and she actually lets him know that she wants to leave Lestat. And um, he's like, we can't leave him. He's never going to leave us alone. She's like, oh, I got a plan for that. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about the plan, Mike? Well, she brings two twin boys. Yep. She goes into Lestat. He's pissed off. He's like, your presence even irritates me. Get the fuck away from me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's playing the piano. Like, through the whole argument, he keeps playing. Right. But she's like, I have a gift for you. I think you'll like it. She takes him to the other room. And um, we haven't mentioned that while... Through the times, she was killing people, like, in their house. Right. And one of his big rules, Lestat's rules, was, like, you don't kill him in the oh, house. Oh, God, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> yeah, so but she keeps killing him in the house. She even killed the grown woman that she saw nude. She killed her. She, I guess, killed her and brought her home. Right. Put her amongst her toys. She's, like, buried underneath her stuffed animals and yeah. shit. Yeah. So um, that was, like, one of his big rules. So she brings these two twin boys in. They're not very old. They're about her age about 12 or so mm-hmm. uh, they got the little blonde ringlets and all that stuff too right so she's like i think i know you'll like them and uh she says that they're drunk on a cap full of brandy mm-hmm. and why they're not responding and uh says that it's there for the stat to drink and that she'll even take care of the bodies right sweet deal yeah no downside so the stat's like so we're cool yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. He's he's all for it. Yeah. yeah. So he goes down and to start feeding on his boy and immediately doesn't feel well, and she says she gave the boys laudanum. Yeah. Which although killed them, keeps their keeps their blood warm. Right. I don't know how that works. Me neither. But whatever. I'll I'll take it. It worked in the scene. Yeah. It it makes for a good story. Yeah. And it's pretty fucking crazy scene. Mm-hmm. Because like he's pissed off. He starts coming, like, he's asking for help from Louis. Louis's just, like, staring. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And then fucking, she slits his throat wide open. Yeah. But he doesn't heal this time. Right. <laughs> I'm guessing it's the dead blood in the system that's making him so weak. Yeah. It, like, weakened him quite a bit. And so, in the house pools with blood, and you see him, like, pretty drained. Dude, that's a bloody ass scene right there because he is gushing from that throat wound, man. Like, There's so much blood pouring through the floor that. Uh, Claudia even asked Louis to put her up on a stool. Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's pretty bad. (laughs) Pretty bad. They decide what they're going to do is to get rid of Lestat, tie him up in, like, this sack, and just chuck him out in one of the swamps that are out there. And um, so they say that, what was it? It was, like, three months until they, because they decide they're going to go to Europe, check shit out there. Yeah. But it was, like, their boat wasn't going to leave for, like, three months or whatever. Yeah, I didn't get a timeline. I don't remember seeing it. I'm not saying they didn't do it. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Um, and so um, they he, they said that they live like orphans because Lestat was trying to teach him all the shit, and now he wasn't there at all. Well, he know? never taught him shit. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> you know? That's one of Louis's, like, one of his biggest gripes about Lestat was that he wouldn't teach him anything. He'd, like, keep him in the closet, basically, on uh-huh. the shit, yeah. And so... Um, Anyway, they're getting ready to pack up. Oh, they have their birds, and they're getting ready to turn them loose, you know, and all that shit. She even says that Louis was like a parent and and to to Claudia, but uh, Lestat was more like a teacher, basically. He wanted to train her to be a vampire. He didn't really, like, offer any parentage to her, you know? Yeah, she, she would, a couple times throughout, she said, you're my Louis, my mother, my father. Right, yeah. And, um... 
So, sure enough, right before they're getting ready to leave, doorbell rings, and it's Lestat. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Looking you fucked up. Oh, man. And that's where, like, the makeup, you're like, damn, this is pretty good-looking shit. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Because it's, it's not, like, super hokey or something that you'd see in, like, a crappy 50s B movie, you know. Like, well, it looks this like is someone who's shit. been living in a swamp. Right. Feeding off of swamp animals. Boo, yeah. Which is what he said. And if you remember the scene where, like, they dropped a sack into the, and the gators all, like, go over to him. Mm-hmm. You see the blood in the water. Right. I think it's him feeding. He's eating the fucking gators. Yeah. yeah. I could very easily see that. But you're led to believe the Gators are getting him, but I think he's getting the Gators. Right, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Lestat, he's pissed off at Claudia. Understandably. Understandably, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say. Uh, and Louis winds up, he attacks her, and uh, Louis burns him alive, basically. Throws an ga- uh, a oil lamp on mm-hmm. him. Yeah, whole place goes up. And it looked like later on it wound up taking out, like, half the city, too. Like, there was just this out-of-control fire. I think he know. said it even, like, burned up a lot of the French Quarter. Yeah. But um, that's, once again, where I come into, does fire hurt these guys or does it not hurt these guys, you know? It hurts them. <laughs> yeah. I guess. It hurts them. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I know it hurts them, but... I don't know. They have a weird relationship with fire, we'll say. Yeah, it is really strange. They don't really explain it, but, I mean, it obviously does some type of damage. Well, and this is the first time I've ever heard of fire really factoring into, like, vampire lore, you know, so. Well, I mean, just fire is destructive, man. It is. I mean, there's not too much that's flame retardant. Yeah. Including flesh. Right. Um, But uh, you even see, like, this cool scene where, like, He's actually crawling up the walls and across the ceiling while he's on fire. <laughs> on fire, yeah. It looks crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Louis and Claudia haul ass to the ship. Mm-hmm. Just they as do. he's pushing off. So there weren't any rats to eat yeah, on the ship. There's still a mysterious plague that they seem to be immune to. <laughs> right. It shows them throwing bodies off the boats. Is he saying they were the ones killing them? Yes. Yes, he was. Apparently, this mysterious plague was them eating people, yeah. So, um, anyway... Um, so it's weird because they show up in Europe and he says that for the longest time they don't find any vampires. Yeah, and they do this cool little, like, um, through, like, charcoal art that Claudia draws. Mm hmm. Like, of all the different cities they went through. Right. So you see, like, Egypt and yeah. Belgium and, like, all the, Spain and all these different places. Mm hmm. She's an incredible <clears throat> artist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, well, had a while to work at, work at it, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they don't find anything. Nope. Um, they, it says that, uh, they wind up going to Paris, it says September 1870, yeah, Paris, where, uh, Louis has always been interested, and finally this vampire ends up, um, encountering him. I think that this is a weird scene, man. The mirror scene? <laughs> yeah. It kind of made me uncomfortable to watch it, honestly. So if any of you have ever seen uh, a Mime Act right. or any of the movies where, like, uh, uh, or it's a twin kind of thing, mm-hmm. and they always do the, like, I move my right hand in this circle and so does the, right. the opposite person, and we mirror each other, they mm-hmm. do that with these vampires. But it's perfectly synchronized. It doesn't look like they're. this is a rehearsed thing, either. It looks very natural whenever they do it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> But yeah, this guy, what is that dude's name? They actually say it in the movie. Um, I think it's Santiago or something like that. Maybe I didn't write his name down. Yeah. But they do this mirror thing until he decides to walk up the wall. Right. Yeah. That also made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just unnatural, you know. Um, and so anyway, um, the guy that he is, that's mirroring him basically gets called out by... Um, what's his post? Armand. Armand's the actor's name. Antonio Manderas. Yeah, that's the second time in two completely different episodes that I've like blanked on Antonio Banderas's name. <laughs> yeah, you did do that during Zoe. <laughs> yeah, I you? did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Armand's like, hey, quit fucking around. You know, we got shit to do. Basically, Antonio Banderas looks like a badass as a vampire, dude. The like the way his hair is, he looks like. Like, if there was a personification of, like, a lion, like, that's his mane, oh, okay. you know? Yeah. And, like, his, of course, he's all dudded up and, you know, his Victorian-era garb, you know, and he just looks badass, you know? Um, he looks like King Vampire, basically. He does. Yeah. Um, so we find out that they're in some sort of vampire-themed theater troupe. 
Yeah. Yeah. So they, they're vampires pretending to be humans pretending to be vampires. Right. <laughs> so they're they're acting vampiric. And then what they would do is in the middle of their vampire deal, they would like bring a, a real woman out, you know, and of course she's acting terrified and screaming like, oh, me and shit like that, you know. Because she is fucking terrified. Right. But everybody thinks it's part of the show. And so they just suck her dry in front of a live audience, you know. No, they even <laughs> like... So they go through, like, these different scenes, and they're, like, you can tell they're, like, building the audience up to it. So this guy who did the mirror scene, he's kind of, like, the head of the theater troupe. Right. And he's playing death. Yes. And he's got a sickle. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's even a couple scenes where, like, he swipes it, and he cuts the arms off of the other people. Right. And, like, you know, red, like, um, uh, streamers, like, come right. out to show blood. Like Zootopia or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah just like that. Right. And, uh, you know, so, like, you're they're soft building the audience in... So their final act is the actual feeding on a real person. Right. They strip her down completely buck naked. Mm-hmm. And there's even a woman in the audience who's like, take me. Right. I love you. <laughs> He's like, later. <laughs> yeah, you wait your turn. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's great. And it's, the audience chuckles. Mm-hmm. Because they don't realize. They're watching is, a murder take yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> and this woman's like pleading with them while they eat their popcorn, basically. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's crazy. Um. So I just wrote down, because, like, Armand is, like, the, the grand finale, like, comes out, like, dudded up, looking like the Prince of Darkness himself, you know, like, comes out and just eats the shit out of this chick, you he know? Is. Well, he doesn't. He is just it? takes, like, one little drink, and then he hands oh, her back yeah, to yeah. the group, and they all <clears throat> attack her. Right. Which, the, the other people in the theater troupe, like, I tried to, when I was watching this uh, last night, I would think in my head... You know, like, think of these people as not really being people. And so, like, it gives it this other really creepy vibe to think of, like, these guys, like, crawling around in, like, their black cloaks and shit, you know, mm. just waiting to feed on this. Well, it was, like, it's a genuinely uneasy scene, you know, to me anyway. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, especially if you put yourself in the position of the of young the girl, woman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we find out that uh, right before... Um, the end of the play that the other guy, Santiago or whatever his name is, he winds up reading Louis's thoughts and, um, he, they, uh, show later on where Louis and Claudia, they take them down to like their catacombs where they stay, you know? And, um, so we get a little bit of insight as to what Armand is thinking. Um, he doesn't believe in like labeling good and evil. He thinks that people just kind of do shit, you know, <laughs> like, and shit just kind of happens, you know. Um, and then <clears throat> um, they do, however, the Santiago guy or whatever, they actually, he mentions to him that vampires killing vampires is like a criminal offense. It's the only crime. Right. The only crime that they they punish, observe basically yeah, yeah is uh killing another vampire mm-hmm and Amon revealed to us that he's 400 years old and as far yeah. as he knows he's the oldest living vampire that's i i find that interesting because that's whenever they allude to the fact that he's the one that turned lestat yes um yeah he definitely knows lestat mm-hmm. uh, i think he tells us in the next scene with them together that he knows lestat right and they actually that's whenever I believe it's the scene where Louis asks him if like where this whole vampire like going back up the chain where like how it started and he's like I don't know you know like <laughs> I'm the oldest one that I know of you know right um, well then who turned you Armand right I can only assume that they're dead you know but whatever mm-hmm. um so uh Armand actually describes Louis as a vampire with a human soul cause he's really not and uh, destructive shit. He doesn't want to hurt anybody, you know, that sort of thing. And then um, there's this weird scene where Claudia wants Louis to turn this woman, um, well, this she, Madeline woman. She said that she could read Armand's thoughts. Claudia read his thoughts. Right. And he knew... Or, well, Armand maybe... Read Claudia's thoughts. She didn't read whatever. Armand's thoughts. Armand implanted a thought into her head that said, let him go. Oh, okay. As in, let Louis go. Right. Because Armand wants Louis. Right. I don't know what his thing is with Louis, but he feels something with Louis. Right. We find out later, I think, why. But, um... You'll have to elaborate on that with me, because I'm, 
<laughs> oh, okay. clueless on it, so I'm anxious so, to hear. So Claudia knows the inevitable that Louis is going to leave Armand, especially after the meeting they just had where basically Armand tells Louis, I will teach you. Right. I will teach you all the things you want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Louis is really thinking about leaving Claudia behind because she's in danger. Right. The other vampires don't like her. Right. She uh, killed Lestat. Yeah, and there's rules against turning someone that young and, like, all these things. Right. So, um, she does bring another woman. Uh, this she, Madeline woman. Yeah, uh, that she met in another doll store. Yeah, and she basically wants her to be, like, her caretaker whenever L- Louis does inevitably leave, Yeah. basically. And you, yeah, she, and you find out that not only does Claudia want this woman, but this woman wants Claudia because she I guess she lost a daughter. Right. She's wearing a, some type of um, pendant around her neck that mm-hmm. shows that. But they say Claudia is not strong enough to turn her? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she wants Louis to do it, and Louis's going to do it. Right. Up until, oh, well, he actually does do it. Um, oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. You're right. And then right then the whole vampire theater troupe comes in and kidnaps the shit out of all of them. Yep. Um, they decide that um, he, oh, he describes himself. He says that after he turns this Madeline woman into a vampire, that his humanity is, like, gone at that point. Oh, right. Yeah, the last breath of his humanity is dead. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then um, we see where Armand's men kidnap uh, Louis and Claudia. Um, this is the a pretty, pretty rough scene because <laughs> they wind up sentencing this Madeline woman and Claudia both to death, basically. Um, and they take Louis. They threw him in this giant metal box and then, like, stick him in a wall. Brick him up, yeah. Brick up the wall around him, yeah. And uh, what they do is they take... It looks like a big silo or something like that where they take Claudia and Madeline and, like, basically just wait. They have to wait out in there until yeah, the fucking sun The silo sun rises. doesn't have a roof. Right. And uh, basically the sun's going to hit him. And it's going to suck. <laughs> so the number one rule for vampires is you can't kill another vampire. But they have a killing chamber specifically designed for vampires. That's what I was watching the movie. And I almost picked up on a little bit more of like social commentary on this. Because it's almost like, you know, like uh, like the death penalty maybe is what Anne Rice is trying to get across. Like, oh, you killed somebody. That was wrong. Now we're going to kill you. You know, <laughs> like right. your kid like hits somebody. And so you spank him, you know, that sort of thing, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. And so uh, the vampires like that's their one. Hey, we don't kill other vampires. And they're like, oh, we're going to kill these fuckers, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> that sort of thing. So I was picking up on maybe a little bit of uh, undertones there. Yeah, you know? and it fries these girls. Oh, yeah, they're done. As soon as the sun hits their skin, they're just vaporized to ash. Start cooking the shit out of them, yeah. Way cooler than in Blade, by the way. <laughs> way cooler. Definitely more artistic, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so Armand frees Louis. Right, he does. Why does he... Oh, well, you said that he likes Louis for undisclosed reasons. No, I know why. Well, okay. So, um... Wait, hold on, I'm reading this... Mike's okay, trying to yes. read. <laughs> so, so he frees him, and uh, Louis understandably pissed. Right. So he immediately enacts revenge. Um, they uh, he goes into the sanctuary. The catacombs while they're asleep. Yeah, well, they're all asleep. They're all in their coffins, mm-hmm. and he pours oil or some type of fuel or something right. all and over flammable. the fucking place. Yeah. yeah, and fucking lights them all up. And as they come out, he's got that sickle that we saw in the play. Right. Cuts one bitch's head off like right away. Mm-hmm. Cuts another dude in half. Right, they're all just like leaping out at toward him because they're on know? fire. Yeah, yeah. And he's just picking them off as they they come out. Yeah. So this is where you were talking about like the rules. Like, does that kill them? I'm guessing cutting your head off does kill you. Well, yeah, that's a fair guesstimation. Maybe it's just the fire hurts them, and they were trying to not be on fire. <laughs> right. Maybe that's what it was and he saw that as an opportunity to get them to come out of their coffins. They're distracted. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he basically um, what is it here? Louis. So, I just wrote Louis avenges Claudia. He burns and decapitates. But that last guy, that Santiago or whatever his name is, I don't remember, hmm. he gets the worst though because he like splits him from like his shoulder down to like the other side of his body on his ribs. Right. <laughs> it's he, really graphic. And it's really cool the way he does it too because it's almost like Louis anticipates what he's going to do because when they first met, 
He's doing the mirror thing. It, well, he jumped. He was there in front of him all of a sudden, then he jumped landed behind him. Right. So now he, like, picks up a sickle to slice this dude, mm-hmm. and the dude disappears. He knows he's going to reappear right behind him, so he just turn, He continues to swing right. behind him and just cuts the dude, like, perfect timing. Right, yeah. And then It wasn't, like, a huge, like, fight scene or anything. Uh-uh. He, yeah, it was over in seconds. But and then yeah. Armando, or Armand saves Louis. Right, because he leaves the catacombs, and the sun's coming up. Mm-hmm. And that's when Armand shows up and fucking gets his ass out of the fire, basically. Yeah, he's got a stagecoach. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a talk. Armand likes Louis because he thinks Louis will kill him. Oh, I see. And will put him out of his misery. I got you. That's interesting. And <laughs> Louis is pissed because he's like, you knew what was going to happen through the whole thing with Claudia and Madeline and all that other shit. Well, if you go with what I'm saying, it only feeds into it. Right. He did that. He let it happen. Hoping that Louis would kill him, basically. Yep. Yeah. I could see that. And he tells him, I'm not going to kill you. Nope. Basically, that's the antithesis of killing him. You know? yeah, your punishment is to <laughs> You got to keep living. Yep. <laughs> and so, uh, it's good shit. Um, we see where Louis is telling the Malloy character, the guy that's interviewing him, that he wanders through Italy, Greece, and finally comes back to America, back to New Orleans. Yep. And... Course. Watches his sunrise again. Yeah, movies have come out. First in silver, mm-hmm. black and white film. Right. Then in color. Yep. It's good shit right there. Um, so he likes movies a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Spring of 1988, he's back in New Orleans, and he smells the smell of an old death. Mm-hmm. Something too subtle for humans to smell. Right. He follows the smell to a cemetery where he finds Lestat. <laughs> this dude's like a bad penny, yo. Like, fuck off. Um, he actually, uh, he reminisces about, like, the vampire that he used to be. Isn't there, like, rats all over the room and shit? Yeah, he's just been eating a bunch of shit. Yeah. Barely alive, he is. Um. He looks terrible again. Yeah, he looks like crap. But better than he did in the swamp. Yeah. A little bit. He's just, like, gaunt and pale. Right, just really weak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to describe any of these guys as pale is, <laughs> you know. I guess he's more green. Yeah, I would agree. Um, he actually says, like, hey, why don't we become a thing again? And then, like, we could just start being badasses some more, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, let's t- there, Louis like, I'm not. Mm-mm, that's not going to happen. Um, There's a helicopter with a searchlight. Freaks him out. <laughs> right. He thinks that it's the sunlight. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, that's just light. It's not going to hurt you. Well, I don't know what those helicopter dudes are looking for because they put the know. searchlight right on them. They're right on it. Looking through the window at them and then continues on their way. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the fuck they were looking for. I can only imagine, though, anytime, like, you know, because he actually, like, obviously he recognizes, like, the noise and shit. I can only imagine that, like, he's sitting in that stupid mausoleum thing and, like, anytime the anything would fly over and shine a light in there he'd start freaking out until louis like dude it's not a big deal you know Mm -hmm. um so um he talks about how louis says that he's passionless and empty he has like no reason for living he's basically just drifting you know um and then we cut back to present day yeah he mentions he doesn't know what happened to lestat no after he left um, and he tells Malloy, it's the end of my story. Yeah. He's and like, there's no grand finale, no... Yeah. <laughs> Malloy's like, what the fuck? I want more. <laughs> it's not much of an ending. You yeah. brought me here for a reason. <laughs> right. So Malloy wants to be turned. Right. He's like, anyone would give anything to be, to have what you have. Mm-hmm. To live this amazing life you've lived. And of course, Louis's like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> he I don't want up. to turn you. Yeah. Yeah. Holds him up by his throat. Like in the air. Like, like, is this what you want? Yeah. Yeah. All that shit. Of course, Malloy, he's freaked out. And he, like, once he hits the ground again, he looks around and Louis's gone. You know, and so he's like, oh my God, get me out of here. Runs down to his car, takes off driving. He's feeling good about himself, starts listening to the tapes that he recorded. And uh, then we get the sequel bait. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, the Mike. The stats in the motherfucking car. <laughs> right. Fucking grabs him, bites him. He's looking back to normal. Yeah, he's looking pretty good. Yeah. He bites uh, Malloy, tosses him to the passenger seat, right. fucking starts driving. Mm-hmm. And says, I'm going to give you a choice I didn't get. Right. And uh, they're listening to, uh, oh, what is it? It's, um, 
um, pleased to meet you. You guys know my name, the mm-hmm. Rolling Stones, all that shit. Because there's actually a lot of uh, lyrics in that song, I think, that are applicable to the movie itself. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But it seemed kind of weird, like, that was a studio choice to me. Because the rest of the movie, like, this whole end of the movie where Lestat shows up, I was just like, that kind of came out of nowhere, man. Like, <laughs> you know? It almost seemed like, and I don't know, maybe that's the way the book is. I've never read it. But it seemed really kind of out of nowhere you know he like grabs so. the steering wheel of the car yeah. like it's the first time he's ever done it yeah and starts just like smiling let's drive yeah, yeah. let's see rock what's the going fuck on out. yeah and they listen into rock and roll yeah it's really strange the but, end uh, yeah that's the way it is and that's why i say i think that you know there was potential there where you know you could add christian slater in the next one and now he's a vampire you know and all this other shit but the next one never came for undisclosed reasons or maybe they never intended to do another one but that just seems kind of weird the way that they would end it like that you know if that's the case so i don't know it's strange but that's the way they ended it that's the way it ended yeah so <laughs> uh what did you think of interview with the vampire Mike? well obviously i loved it right i love this movie um watching it back again i watched it with nicole my wife who hadn't seen it she said since she was like 12 years old okay um, so, you know, she's 31 now, so that's yeah, quite a while. Yeah, almost 20 years, yeah. yeah. And uh, she enjoyed it, too. She thought it was really cool. Yep. Um, I mean, it was just a lot of fun watching it. I hated taking notes during it. I kind of did, too. I just wanted to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I think in this show for me, the measure of a good movie is, like, when I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to take notes. I just want to watch. <laughs> I kind of felt that way, sadly, when we were watching Lost in Space. But that was just because, like, there was so much random shit going on. I was like, man, I really don't. I'm sitting there writing just, like, cussing, like, what the fuck? I have you know? feeling sometimes, too. <laughs> yeah. Just exasperated, you so know? So I guess if we're tired of taking notes, we either love it or hate it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're either having a great time or an awful time. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I so like this movie. It's a two-hour long movie. And they cram a lot in there for two I hours. I do. I feel like that, too. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of fluff in there. Mm-mm. I feel like they're getting to a point almost every time they do something, there's a point to it. But it didn't seem like it was, like, jam-packed where it's just, like, a mile-a-minute story nope. either, you know. It, it had, like, the perfect pacing to it, I think. I agree. I will say that I felt like the Armand uh, subplot with the vampire troop and all that other stuff really seemed like it came... It, it seemed kind of random to me. Um... And maybe that's just me, but I was, like, sitting there watching it going, what does this have to do, really, with Lestat and all that other stuff? But I guess it's really more so Louis' story, so. Yeah, I mean, it's his interview. Right. <laughs> um, I, I just see it as, like, a book. It's a different chapter. Yeah, I could see that, definitely. Did you ever, because I know that, obviously, I have the DVD, but I always call it Interview with a Vampire instead of Interview with the Vampire. So. <laughs> Interview with the vampire. It's the vampire? Mm-hmm. I guess I never paid attention like to that. one of those uh, goofy, like, Nelson Mandela type moments. Let me see here. <laughs> interview with I the vampire. I wrote Interview with a Vampire on my title. Nope, so. it's the vampire, my oh, friend. okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, overall, I would say that this is a good movie. Um, it's definitely a step outside of Tom Cruise's comfort zone, I oh, would say. Oh, so glad you said that. Mm. So... I really feel like that's where Tom Cruise is probably going to end up moving to at some point in his career, probably in the not-too future. His action shit's going to die down. Yeah. I have a feeling. Well, his last... Okay, I have not seen the latest Mission Impossible. For heard it's I awesome. Heard, I heard it's the best one. Yeah. I heard it's the best Mission Impossible. I love Impossible. that series, so, you know. I heard it's the best Mission Impossible they've done so far. It's widely documented and covered in the news media that he got hurt pretty badly doing one of his stunts. Yeah. Um, I don't think Tom Cruise is ever going to be okay with some stuntman doing all his stunts for him no. and he gets to pretend the rest of the his time. His ego's too big. Yeah. So I think and I think it'd be a good move because this move really showed us that he knows how to be very artistic. Yeah. I agree. I mean, he's an incredible Lestat. He's really good. I thought at points that it seemed like um, Brad Pitt, his acting was a little stiff to me, but I thought that Tom Cruise really brought it in this one, though. I really enjoyed watching him. And he's just really diabolical, and he plays it really well. Totally bought it. Yeah, I agree. And Christian Dunst fucking kicked ass. Oh, man, she was fantastic. And she was 12 years old at the time. And, man, she just, you know, anybody that says, like, oh, kid actors, fuck them, you know. Dude, you haven't seen this movie then, because that's mostly the case, but not here, you know. Well, and I... 
man, my memory's so screwed, but I've been right most of the time that I've said these kinds of things. I think she was nominated for like Best Supporting Actor in this film. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure she was. I don't want to Google it and waste no, people's time. But <laughs> I don't care. I'm pretty sure she was. Rightfully so. I mean, especially considering her age, she fucking aced it, dude. So, um, Christian Slater, they didn't really give him much to do. Although I really did enjoy uh, Banderas in this. So I did too. Yeah. I thought he was good. And he had that old school, you know, like, because him being obviously a Spaniard, mm-hmm. you know, really... It made sense that he would be in Europe, but it gave him a certain amount of, like, eloquence. You know, he was more refined, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, so was Tom Cruise. and Yeah. Know, like, they, they, I don't know. It really lent. Maybe it was just the writing that lent Could be. It to yeah. them. But I think the main characters of this film really did well. Mm-hmm. Um, like as we said already, uh, there's not a real lot of fluff in there. Nope. But it doesn't seem too crazily packed. Nope. You know, it just—it was—it's a good movie, man. It's a good movie. Um, it's on Netflix, y'all. Yeah, go watch it. Obviously, it's—it's it's pretty good. It's not my favorite movie, but it's good. No, I didn't even. So we've talked about this top ten list movie thing. <laughs> we have. We've talked about it several times. Shane and I have. And one of the reasons why I haven't been totally on board to do that episode yet is because I haven't really just nailed down my top ten yet. Well, and I've been like trying to pressure you. I'll be like, yo. Let's do this top ten. Come up with the top ten real quick. And you're like, eh, is that something I want to do real quick? You yeah, know, like, and I've, I've made lists. I've made yeah. lists. Like, I have lots of movies and out there. And refined them, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I've been making lists. But um, I will say that this is definitely up there in the top of one of my favorite vi- vampire movies. Oh, yeah, easily. It's uh, better than Blade. So, you know. That's better than <laughs> all of the Twilights. <laughs> What's that tell you? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Anything's better. Blade's better than Twilight, so. And then, like, Queen of the Damned, I love that movie, but I just love it because Aaliyah is so fucking awesome in it. Yeah. I just, I heard bad things when it come out, and so I, you know. She's incredible. To me, I think of, like, Lestat playing in a rock band, almost like if you think of, like, The Fox and the Hound 2. <laughs> like, that straight-to-video shit they came out with where, like, you know, Todd or whatever's playing in a band now. That's so dumb. Is Jonathan Taylor the, the name of the lead singer for Korn? I think so. Maybe. Anyways, that, so he's the voice to yeah. the stat when they're singing in the concerts or whatever, and it like <laughs> hypnotizes crowds and things like that. I got you. And I think that's a super cool power. It could be. Um, apparently he like plays a guitar riff that like awakens the queen of the... That's so dumb. <laughs> I'm not saying it's really great writing, but right. I, well, I like the movie be- mostly because of Leah. Yeah. I just think, what does that have to do with the rest of this shit going on? Like, yeah. Louis and everything, you know, but it's whatever. Um, I, like, I like Underworld. I like Underworld. I like, I like Kate, the first I like couple. Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. She's smoking. Yeah, and that. she plays a good role. Yeah. She's she's a good actress. A lot of times you have to, like, take one or the other, but I think that she brings it on both fronts, so. Um, anyway, um, anything, final thoughts on vampire it's this. good if you haven't watched it in a while guys go watch it i think you'll be uh, happy to find that you, it's that there's some stuff you forgot that's really cool um, it holds up pretty well it does um I, you know we uh, talked about this before but i think uh time period pieces period pieces seem to hold up a lot better i agree than futuristic or modern day stuff mm-hmm yeah one i noticed um and this is something i talked to the wife about was one that i think holds up horribly is um, the 40-year-old virgin, actually. All oh, right, we mentioned this before. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, just, like, VCRs and shit. Right, just yeah. because it's in an electronic store, it is aged awful, you know? Like, it seems like it's 20 years old, so. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you've been watching anything this week, Mike? Anything good? Uh, No, I really haven't. Awesome. So this week, I told the you guys. Inside of it hospital (laughs) i was only there for a minute but uh i told you guys i was playing softball well this week was the playoffs um so i played every night this week yeah um the only night i didn't play was the night yes last night where i got to watch the movie Mm -hmm. um other than that we've just been playing or keeping up with our dumbass shows that we just keep watching big brother big brother um it's getting good Another week where one side of the house just totally <laughs> manipulated the other side of the house. The the other alliance sucks. Yeah. They do not know what they're doing. <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> um, 
I got to watch. Um, I was looking through Netflix because my wife and kids were mm-hmm. over at your house this week. I did watch them. for a couple days. Go ahead. Um, so I got to sit down. I was looking. Through I know Netflix. you were loving it. I heard. I you mean, on, I heard you on the phone with Madeline. You're, you're on speaker. Or whatever. Hey. And you're like, oh, okay, baby, love you too. Okay. okay. And I was time just to like, go. I was just like, Shane sitting over, just like, finally a quiet house. All right. Where I can just watch what the <laughs> fuck I want to watch. Right. It's it's a good opportunity to recharge the batteries. The only thing about it is, is since I was working ten hour days, I'd have like a couple hours until it was time to hit the hay, mm-hmm. you know. But um, I did get a chance to watch The Departed. Oh wow! Which is on Netflix. Is it? Yeah, I'm gonna definitely check that back out. Um, I already own a copy of it on DVD, but I was like, well, shit, why go upstairs and grab it if I could just watch it here, you know? Mm-hmm. Which I'm sure we'll talk about it, you know, in however many years <laughs> that's gonna be. Um, I also, so there is this uh, CBS miniseries that came out back in the day that was called Intruders. And it was like this alien abduction miniseries that had come out. And I got to watch it. And uh, I remember when I was a kid just being horrified by this thing. And uh, I watched it again because they have it on YouTube, insanely. And uh, man, it's still creepy as fuck. Is it? Yeah. Well, alien abduction's always been something that, like, you know, people are afraid of ghosts whatever people are afraid of you know jason for whatever stupid shit you know but to me alien abduction is like my supernatural like fear that like freaks the shit out of me like i don't find myself getting scared on anything like that like alien abductions all the horror films like i don't get scared like somebody the scariest for you is like somebody breaks into your house and you gotta fucking put them down or something like strangers (laughs) strangers is that what it's called i don't know what was the movie where like the people with the mask like knocked on the door is that um the purge no not the purge oh no no i know which one you're talking where they're all like eating dinner and like those guys randomly show up or whatever yeah yeah now that, that kind of shit you. scares me yeah because that could happen right yeah the chance of me being alien abducted pretty slim dude it freaked me out so bad there's this one part of that mini series where they're hypnotizing this woman that's been abducted when i was a kid i watched it and like um they actually like they hypnotize her so that she can like recall what happened exactly and um so anyway she winds up um during her hypnosis she like remembers them like walking through the walls to like come and grab her and shit and like because of that i was so freaked out like a lot of kids if they're afraid of the dark or whatever they'll sleep like far away from the door so they have like that extra like split second to like react if something comes through there with me i slept close to the door like away from the wall because like i was like i don't want no part of no aliens coming in here and fucking with me you know that's hilarious (laughs) yeah it had me terrified dude and i think that it's i mean it's age because it's a cbs miniseries so it's not like big budget shit Mm -hmm. but i think that the the thrills still kind of hold up a little bit right on so yeah um do you know what we're watching next week? I have no idea. <laughs> we talked about it a little bit earlier. No, we but, didn't. Uh, well, no, we. I said that you'd never guess. Yeah, no, <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Um, so while we're talking about, you know, lifeless creatures that suck all in all, we're actually going to be talking about our first Cameron Diaz movie. A little segue into that. <laughs> so, what movie is it? The There's something about Mary. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ben Stiller and all that shit. Yeah. Is this going to be our first straight-up comedy? I think it might be, actually. Um, we have a couple more before the year's out, but I think this one might be our first, like, slapstick Ferrelli Brothers-type comedy, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. I'm anxious to talk about it. I, didn't we do another one? Another what? Another comedy. I guess Back to the Future kind of dabbled in comedy a yeah, little bit. Yeah, there's some funny stuff in there. But it wasn't straight-up. I don't think we've done any straight-up comedies. Yeah. So... I'm excited to... It's my favorite Ben Stiller movie. Oh, is it? Yeah. I like Meet the Parents. It's good, too. It's funny. But I like this one better. Yeah. Have you seen this my bait pong? <laughs> it should be good. I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you guys have anything that you want to say, I've actually looked at our email account for the first time in, like, 31 weeks. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything. So Seriously? <laughs> Nobody had any shit to we say. We had no emails? Uh, a couple things, like... Offers to like enlarge my penis. Oh, but, like, yeah. oh make sure you send me those links. <laughs> right, yeah. Mike's got to work on that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have anything that you would like to contribute to the show, anything you want to say in general, you can email us at cheesymovie at yahoo.com. Our Twitter is Casino Royale WCH, all one word. Our Facebook, Casino Royale with cheese, all separate words. Um, 
You can look us up on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Casino Royale W Cheese. And don't forget about our Instagram where it is Casino Royale W Cheese, same as YouTube. And I think that's going to be it for me, Padre. I got one last thing to add. Go ahead. Uh, Shane and I were talking before this. If we want to make this thing bigger than it is, we really need to start pushing our social media. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Shane and I are social media retards. Right. And uh, if anyone out there would be like to help. If you have time. Yeah. Unlike me. I understand that. You know, <laughs> right. People have families and jobs and all that stuff. So. Well, I'm just saying we don't. So, you know. <laughs> if, if you would like to help or think you could help in any way at all, you know, hit us up on one of the ways that, uh, Shane just mentioned. And we'd be surely grateful. Yeah. Um, we don't have a Patreon, but if you just want to mail us like envelopes of money, then you can email me and I'll hook it up too. So, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think that's going to be it for me, my friend. That's all I got, brother. All right. Well, make sure you all join us next week when we discuss Mary and the things that are about her. And we will see you next time. Bye. I'll be back.